Hi, it's Bruce. All right, today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about some of the chores you got to do after the honey harvest. So today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about protecting some of the wax that I took off the supers. And we'll, talk, we'll show you a little bit about rendering some of that wax. So stick around. This should be pretty fun. All right. Hi, I just thought I'd show you a couple things that uh, we do after the honey harvest. So here's some of the supers I took off. And, you know, um, <laughs> sorry, I'm not doing this very well. What you do is you use moth crystals. You see that? This is moth ice crystals. Now, if you get this, you want to make sure that you get the right kind. You need the active ingredient, uh, which is... Ah, oh, shucks, I can't read it. <laughs> Dichlora... Um, it's P. Dichlora something or other. But anyway, there's one kind of mothballs is very bad and the other kind is okay. This stuff here, you put this in and the, the, the uh, fumes will kind of go down and that will, that will stop any uh, wax moths because, so the bees clean these out uh, I don't have a high tool on me. They're locked in pretty good. Mm. <laughs> but trust me, these have got wax that I've spun out. So after I spun these out, I put those back on top of the hives for a few days. And then when the hurricane was coming, I went ahead and took them off. And so anyway, that, there, that will prevent wax moths and I can store these all right. It would be also be okay to, to freeze them, but my freezer is kind of full right now. So that's what you do with the, uh, the frames that have wax in them that you want to preserve, because that wax is like your gold. You can use that in certain times to come. All right. So remember I said that your wax, your comb, I should say, is gold. There are so many times when you have a, a colony that needs a little boost and adding a piece of, of comb, a frame of comb, really gives them that boost. The best thing you can do is actually to freeze that comb. So my freezer doesn't hold a whole lot because I, um, I have uh, some food in there too, of course. But this will kill all the wax moths, all the high beetle larvae, anything that's in there, that'll kill it. And so what I do is I leave it in the freezer for a couple of days, and then I have a uh, plastic storage tote that I keep in the house under air conditioning. And that way, when I need to give a colony a little bit more comb, I've got it. I'm ready. Hi. Can you see me? All right. I thought I'd show you a little bit what I do. So this is my decaparant tank here. It has to be washed out yet. And this one's solid. And this one here, now there's quite a few bees in it, but this one's got a bunch of holes in the bottom. Okay. So I've left this sitting outside for a few days and uh, the bees have really cleaned out a lot of the honey, but there'll still be a little bit of honey in it. So what I'm going to do, tap it down a little bit. Now, because I left it for a few days, there's, there's hive beetle larva and wax moth larva and stuff in there. But we're going to kill all that. We're going to get rid of all that. So I shake the wax cappings into a beat up old paint strainer bag that's been used for this purpose before. OK. 
Okay, that's most of it. Now this is nasty, nasty stuff here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to twist it up a little bit and tie the top. Okay, so that's tied off. Now, I've got this big old pot. I bought it at a thrift shop. You notice I got one brick down inside it. Can you see that? That's just to keep the bag from uh, going to the direct heat. So I put my bag inside. Okay, now I'm gonna wash it a little bit. So bear with me for a second. Okay, so got my garden hose. out some of the old junky stuff out of there. Okay, that's pretty good there. So I've got the water a couple inches down. I'm going to put these two bricks on top. One this way, and one is this way. Okay, and I'll show you what we're doing next. All right, so at this point here, I added just a little bit of water, so the water is about this low. The brick's holding the bag down, and I put it on the stove. I used to do this outdoors using a hot plate, and my hot plate has died now. I guess I've overused it. So I got to be careful. I don't want this to overflow. I don't want this to overboil. But the stove will bring the temperature up pretty quickly. So. I don't want this to get to a uh, big boil, but when it gets hot, when it gets hot enough for the wax to start releasing, it'll go right through that bag that's in there and it'll float to the top. So I'm just going to let this go for a little while, let it get hot, and then I'll take it outside and just leave it outside overnight and I'll, I'll have a little wax ring. Now, usually, I don't fill the bag on the inside as high as this. Usually I have the bricks below the level of the water, but um, unfortunately this time I just had a lot, so I just finished it off by adding it to the bag. All right, I'll show you what's next in a few minutes. Okay, so at this point I've turned the stove off and, well, you know, it's the brick sunk down just below the water level and there's a little bit of stuff on top. Now, I'm just gonna put it outside and let it cool overnight. I'll show it to you tomorrow. All right, today I thought I would um, clean up some of that wax that I melted the other day. 
So I've got a crock pot here that is dedicated just to melting wax. And I bought that at a thrift stop, a thrift store. I think I paid $8 for it. And um, certainly don't use that one for food. All right, so I got an old t-shirt and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this from the front to give myself like the most material like that. Okay, now this t-shirt goes in here. That covers real good. All right, give me a second, I'll get some water. Okay, now, I've got my crock pot set on high for now, uh, just to get it hot. But once it warms up a little bit, I'll turn it down to medium. And I've got these rings that I had done before. And some of them are not too bad, but some of them are. And I'm just gonna break them up a little bit. Whenever you mess with wax, you always got nos nosy bees coming around to see what you're doing. They are extremely interested in this process. That's probably a little more water than I need, but it'll be fine. This one's thick, so this one will be a little bit harder to break, but still doable. So not all of these are from this, um, this last harvest. Some of these I've just had that I was just kind of waiting around for a good time to do this. Okay, now I'm just going to let that cook down for a while and we'll come back later and take a look at it. Okay, <clears throat> it's been about two hours and um, <laughs> I meant to turn the heat down and then I uh, got busy doing other things and didn't do it. So it's been on high all this time. I'll just unplug it here. Okay. So, I've got this beautiful, nice, wet honey, and of course I've got nosy bees too. They really want to be a part of everything I do, it seems like. Now, there'll be a little bit of wax left in this t-shirt, but not too bad. Now, the main thing I want to try and do is keep any bees from suiciding in this wax. I had just one go in there a second ago. I'll need to get a, a stick or something to get her out. Come on, girl, get out of there. It smells really good. <laughs> Yeah. One thing about bees, you know, they see really well, but they can they have a really really keen sense of smell. They don't know for sure just what's going on with all this wax, but they sure do want to see.
Ooh, that's hot, even through the glove. Okay, so I'll just drop that right there, let it cool off. This is unplugged now, so it's going to, uh, it'll cool itself off. The bees will give up after a little while when they feel, figure out that they can't get in there. <laughs> a little wax on my gloves. I'll show you what it looks like in a little while when uh, everything cools down. I might even let it cool down overnight before I, before I show you. We'll see. All right. Okay, I've let this cool down. Now, let's see what we come up with. Oh my. Now, is that beautiful or what? That's a good looking piece of wax. Now, there's a little bit of gunk on the bottom. I can, I can scrape that off pretty easily or I could even run it through a t-shirt again if I want to, but that's what it's about. Now, what is this good for? I've talked about wax being gold. You know, for me, what I use it for, I do leatherworking stuff and there's a lot of processes. I wax my needles and I make leather preservative with this. In the past, I've used this to make furniture polish. You know, um, you can put it on a gun stock. I use it I use it in a concoction to make bullet lube for my uh, black powder guns. This stuff is great. This stuff is great and it's worth some money. So it's worth doing. It does, it's not hard. It takes a little bit of time is all, but easy to do. So the other day, one of my friends asked me if I was able to walk around and do stuff in my backyard without the bees bothering me, but I love them. I, I, I love sitting out here and spending time with these girls. They're great. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you did, I'd like you to give me a big thumbs up and a subscribe. You know, make your comments. I love it. I'll answer your comments if I can. And I will see you next time, but the beekeeping journey goes on. I've got a playlist right up here that will show you some good stuff about doing beekeeping how-tos. All right, this is Bruce. I will see you the next time.